so this is a this is a recorded session. Uh, I mean, mainly because um, you know, we, uh, even though people would not be able to join, we usually upload it uh, in our website so that you know people can watch and uh, get benefited. Um, yeah, once again, thanks for joining in this evening on a Sunday evening. I uh, hope you all have had a good service, uh, a blessed service, and. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, the next uh, one or two hours, we'll see how we can make it useful and productive for all of us. Um, and uh, as the title says, future tense, and I'm sure you, uh, all of you would have understood what uh, really it meant. Um, uh, so in the, in the last two years, just after the pandemic, I think one of the areas which are the, you know, the people who've been impacted the most, uh, I believe are the students, you know, of course, there's, there's a lot of un unemployment and lot of other issues but uh, one of the key areas uh, that impacted is is education uh, you know personally I feel really sad for a lot of these students right you know a lot of them never got a chance to go to uh, you know go to school in person the whole bunch of 11th and 12th stand students um, you know it's, it's it's quite sad right um, and, and the, the whole uh, the way that the edu uh, higher education is seen is is, is changing a lot um, you know the people, um, the way they see it, and um, and what the what the institutions are offering, um, the introduction of technology, a lot of things are uh, changing. And you know maybe just about five six years down the line, or maybe ten years back, uh, there were not too many options. You know it was a lot more easier, like for people like me. You know you know you just do a, an engineering engineering graduation or a masters and get into a job. Um, you know today it's a lot more. Uh, you know, there are plenty of options and, uh, and it also adds a lot of, you know, uh, while there are a lot of choices, there is also a lot of confusion, uh, right? And, and adding to that is this whole pandemic impact. So what we thought is, you know, get, get uh, 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 have this session where you can uh, bring in your questions. Uh, we, we've had registrations, we have a lot of questions uh, on the, from the registration as well. Uh, we will ask, you know, as those uh, questions um, uh, to our panelists. You know, we have two uh, panelists today. I'll int introduce them shortly. Um, and also we have a um, couple of our students, uh, you know, who were part of uh, a church moved uh, to outside India to study. Uh, you know, we have Sushil, uh, Gabriela, Nikita. Um, you know, we thought, you know, they can also share their experience uh, of, you know, how they went about the higher studies. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, if you've already shared, great, but uh, you can also uh, type it in the chat window um, and, uh, you know, we would, will address uh, each and every question. So like I said, you know, this, we want to make this as an interactive session uh, and it's not a lecture session. Nobody's prepared with, uh, you know, 20 slides. Or so, uh, so let's just uh, you know feel free to you know interact and uh, and even if you are not directly impacted with those particular questions, please ask so that it might benefit somebody else, um, right? And like I said, you know we will record the session and put it online so that you know somebody will be benefited. Um, all right. So uh, without any further delay, I uh, want to introduce our, um, our first panelist, you know, Prabhudas. Uh, uh, Professor Prabhudas, as I call him, you know, he, uh, you know, he's, uh, I have known him for, a, you know, for a long time, for almost now 15, 16 years. Uh, he was my professor when I did my uh, master's in, um, uh, you know, in management, um, and he was a marketing professor. Uh, I'm glad to have him here uh, today. Um, uh, he's, he's currently lives in Kodaikanal, uh, and he describes himself as a teacher, a speaker, uh, coffee lover. I still remember how he kind of, you know, has his lover's coffee uh, um, and, and, a, and a, a strong people person and, uh, and also an aspiring uh, farmer. Um, he currently works with uh, uh, Kodai International School, uh, manages the uh, human resource uh, uh, part of it. Um, he, 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 you know, he's done yeah, his master's in management, marketing and cross-culture from Pondicherry University. Uh, and also have a postgraduate certificate from uh, in strategic management uh, from IM Code. Um, and he's a, he's a strong uh, academician and I've worked in several uh, well-known institutions, um, Kodai uh, Christian College, uh, St. Joseph Institute of Management, Bangalore uh, Management Academy, uh, Xavier's Institute of Management and the Entrepreneurship. 
and we also worked with Presidency College, um, Edisource Solution, and and last, you know, we worked at uh, as a dean at uh, Sashadri Academy for Global Excellence, uh, something a, a program that uh, focused on you know student exchange programs, and uh, we, you know, a lot of uh, uh, international students used to come um, and be part of those uh, uh, programs. So yeah, so he comes with a strong uh, you know experience in the education background. So we thought he would be the right person to. Address some of the queries uh, on uh, higher studies, on education in general, um, and and about everything. You know, a strong believer. Uh, he's been also involved in several ministries. Uh, you know, while he was in Bangalore. Um, and one of the interesting thing is, and you know, he was the one who introduced me to APC when I first moved into Bangalore. Uh, I still remember. You know, the first time he took me to uh, one of the youth meetings uh, for uh, at the APC. And ever since then, I've been with APC. So it's been uh, what about uh, 18 years or so. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, for that. And we're happy that uh, you are here today. Thanks a lot, Melky. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, <laughs> All right, great. So, so sir, uh, maybe I'll just uh, uh, you know quickly, uh, just as an introduction, uh, like I was just giving in, uh, a background to the whole session, right? You know, for, uh, uh, and how things are changing in the education sector. Um, you know, you, you've been in the thick of things. How do you see uh, what has changed in the last two years? Um, uh, you know, the impact of the pandemic over the education sector and how particularly the students, right? You know, uh, the students at the schools or just to the, you know, uh, how higher education has been impacted. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, thanks, Nanti. Uh, I mean, I just want to start, I mean, like, uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, through APC. And as Melky said, uh, you know, my connect with APC and Melky goes for a really long time. Uh, I, I remember uh, joining APC, uh, being part of it since 2004, when they used to meet at St. Vegetine Convent and then uh, Melky came in and, and this kind of the work Melky is doing in terms of the youth and the professionals is uh, phenomenal. And so uh, thanks for this platform. Uh, coming back uh, to your question, how education has changed in the last uh, two years, especially, uh, I'm sure, I, I'm not sure how many of you in this particular uh, panel, that this entire group uh, have graduated in the last two years. Uh, there is a label that has come to uh, each of us as COVID batch. I mean, like, no, at least that, that's a big kind of a stigma that is attached to it. Uh, you know, be it in terms of uh, what next in terms of courses or in terms of career, uh, the biggest challenge sometimes is, uh, you know, hitting the student community is that uh, there is a stigma that has got attached to this particular batch. The last two years, uh, especially those who were in the second year uh, in 2020, so virtually the, the prime of the undergrad or the program was actually dealt during this entire lockdown period. You know, we were, uh, you know, we had made to sit in corners of houses on or online. So that is one part of it. But the other interesting thing I see in this last two years is that we have become extremely uh, focused in terms of what we really want to learn. You know, previously, uh, the thirst to learn, the thirst to understand what, uh, you know, it was just about, I have enrolled for a program, I'm gonna be with friends. But then since the last two years, you find, uh, uh, thanks to these brilliant platforms like, you know, Coursera and edX, I was just looking at some of the stats about people enrolling for online programs, it is it's just triple. I mean, like, no, in uh, one year is around 20 million people have signed up for courses and, uh, you know, online courses, not just courses, uh, online. So if you look at stats like that, what is encouraging us, we have become more aware of what we really need in terms of studies, what we want to really do. Uh, there is a big shift between just doing an undergrad program or a postgrad to what I really want to do in Excel. So there's a lot of thinking that has gone in. I mean, the first few months, it was a, a, a fun time. Uh, we thought COVID is gonna be this lockdown in the early twenties, three months, let's have a break and then you're gonna get back in June for classes. But then when, when it really hit it and we realized this might be the future where it's gonna be online, uh, there is this big shift in terms of the seriousness and the focus among the students. I mean, right now here, I'm in a school, uh, you know, it's just about 12th grade. If you look at the number of number of students who are actually enrolled for some of these courses as an add-on when they when they look at colleges abroad, it's quite interesting. Outside of their regular study subjects that they have, 
most of them have enrolled to a significant number of programs. Um, just to add up, I mean, like physics, uh, it was taught online here in school, but then uh, the students have taken two or three panel certifications just to make sure uh, there is much more information and, and a lot of insights they get out of the subject. So the last two years, and even though it has been a kind of uh, a tough time for the student community, even in terms of getting the best out of teachers, uh, I don't think it has been happened so far in the last two years. You know, we, we have found it difficult. A normal uh, a 40 to 60 minute classroom engagement would have really brought in a lot of discussions. You know, an online platform, that discussion is not happening. I mean, like, no, we, we, we feel it's okay. We'll just let it be one way. But then uh, on the other side of it, we see more uh, focused uh, students, uh, people who look and seek for colleges. I mean, it's interesting when, when uh, uh, even when uh, Melky sent this particular, uh, you, know, uh, you know, questions, some of the questions that came up and I looked at the number of participants, it's very encouraging. I mean, like, you know, we are looking at, you know, what next in our life. We are looking at, you know, how to really navigate this particular thing. And one important thing that we realize is this is the future at the end of the day. We are no more gonna be kind of, uh, a physical brick and mortar college that we're going to see around our places. We're going to see uh, campuses that's going to be at your residences. It's going to be a, a lot of focus on online kind of based education, which only would help us better. Maybe we're still in a kind of a rudiment to say there's going to be more kind of changes that's going to come on online. Uh, and, and this is here to stay. I mean, here to stay, that's what I feel. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, just, just adding to that question, you know, I know you very rightly said there's, there's all, all, already a stigma associated with this current batch, not just 11th to 12th, and people who are passing out, even from colleges, right? Uh, this, uh, you know, as, as the COVID batch, you know, for somebody who's passing out uh, in, in that batch, um, you know, so, for somebody who's, who's not sure about the future, um, uh, and and perhaps maybe the uh, low on uh, you know self esteem. What what would you suggest? How do you think that they can uh, you know look things positively? What are the things that they can do uh, you know to to see things positively? Okay, so there are two things here again. An answer one: uh, most organizations do not discriminate uh, in terms of when a student has graduated. So that is one part of it. But then being said that, there's a lot of this, uh, you know, an unconscious bias most of the people really exhibit. You know, I, I happen to be a human resource person here. And when I do get an application or, or a, you know, a candidate sending a thing and I see that they have graduated, you know, in 2020, 2021, uh, unconsciously, I, I start to try to, you know, keep it off. So that is happening there. But beyond it, I can also tell you in the, in the, at the same time, we have hired people who does things. So there is still future. Uh, yes, people's esteem sometimes are really low at this point in time about when we look at what next. Uh, uh, is my piece of certificate that I've got from a university is going to value? I can trust and tell you that this is going to be valued. I mean, it is uh, any for any course or any kind of a profession that you're going to head in. Uh, it's just about the first entry. I mean, the first kind of you know, a call that you get from an uh, organization, if, if talk about a workplace or a course, it's about that interview panel because beyond it, it's all about how you really present yourself and take it forward. And, 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 and no employer or no university would just gonna put you down because you, you, you know, you happen to be in these two years. So I don't think that is gonna happen. Uh, there is still a kind of a greater kind of thing. I mean, uh, if you look at world around, uh, the interesting part is two years are given scope for a lot of newer programs to really come up. You know, there's no more these kind of those traditional kind of programs that are there. There are so many kind of uh, alternate kind of courses. There are quite a number of certification that can really be skill oriented kind of programs that have been started in the last few years. I mean, the last two to three years. Things that we thought cannot be taught online. Things that we thought maybe this is just a kind of a, a course for a, a hobby or more like you know, just a kind of interest today that has become the breadwinners for some of these people. Uh, so I would honestly say uh, the element of, uh, you know, low esteem when we look at, you know, this last two years, uh, looking ahead of it, we can always say uh, this can create a valuable insight. I mean, 
uh, I'm, I'm sure most of us are watching uh, Shark Tank, at least in India, it suddenly became popular with, with, with a whole bunch of ideas coming in. Most of these ideas have happened around the COVID time. You know, a lot of these people started because they were pushed to a corner. They didn't know what to do. Uh, they needed some money to fund their education. They needed to do something about making little more money. And then you hear this an idea that has converted them into, you know, uh, a million dollar enterprises that you see. So uh, I, I think uh, this two years also has really taught us that we can really sustain and grow. I mean, if you feel that, uh, Am I in the right kind of a place in terms of uh, you know the courses that I took? Maybe when you took a course back in 2019 in college, you would have thought about certain things in life when you chose. And, and that's what rightly Melky said. Uh, back then we had a handful of courses to really choose. You know, you did a, a an engineering or a science degree, you did a kind of postgrad in maybe the related field, or you got into an MBA and then started looking for a job. Today, if you look at it. MBA in itself has got multiple different kind of options. You know, we are looking at super specialities that, that's coming in. Um, so what I would honestly say is uh, these two years, whatever has happened, will definitely not have a kind of uh, a big impact for us who feel that we could really scale through. And I can tell you most of them, even as I said, uh, when someone applies for a, a work here for a job in our particular place. And even if it's a 2021, I can honest, being honest about it, if I receive something like 20 odd applications in that particular category, I might choose maybe one or two to call them for an interview. But I can tell you, they do impress the panel who has come and we have offered roles for them in this particular place. So uh, all is not lost and, and, and definitely uh, it's a good sign. And this particular two year batch are technically proficient in terms of what they do. You know, uh, we never had kind of, uh, you know, these Google products that we use for presentations in terms of our research, in terms of use of spreadsheet. Now, if you look at it, thanks to these, these two years, we, we know in and out about how to really go on with our work, be it in terms of presentations, if you're doing an MBA program, you know, the use of spreadsheets have completely changed. I mean, no, no more using those Excel sheets to do it, but rather there's so much of, uh, you know, uh, co-working kind of models that have been created by institutions and thanks to uh, this thing. And I, I, I feel uh, on one way, this is really a pleasant thing to really have our experience in terms of a career for us to bring in that focus in our lives. Uh, I feel if, if this wasn't there, it would have been another three years of education and then it made you think after your college education. If it was, there was no COVID, but I've gone through a, a three-year program and then I say, okay, here is an MBA program. Let me do it and figure out what next. But now I tell you, most students are extremely serious. I can tell you here, uh, back in our school, I work in a school. Uh, the career planning happens for the school students from grade nine onwards. So grade nine, they start looking at assessing each and every student. Uh, and then and start telling them where they are good at, where they can really excel. So they give them career options and, and, and subject options to choose from. Uh, so by the time they come to grade 11 and grade 12, most of them are pretty much uh, focused and oriented towards where they are really uh, looking at. So this is, is a result of something that has happened in the last few years. Uh, earlier, a career planning happened here when they reached a grade 11 or grade 12 uh, because the subject choices were important. But I can tell you that uh, right now, we start this entire career planning process back in ninth itself so that uh, it makes them focus, makes them oriented and, and, and all those things. So I would say if there is someone here among us who feels low about you know, a program that you really opted for maybe a couple of years back, um, or you feel, I don't know what I have really got into in terms of a particular program, there is scope. There is a tremendous amount of scope for us to grow in it. Okay, people who do literature, today you talk about voiceover artists and, and, and literature is just about a part of it today. You know, it's a completely different field. Uh, but thanks to online ventures, uh, the voiceover artists have become a big kind of, a, a, you know, a money. Uh, it's a game changer for them. Otherwise, they would have got into literature-based things, got into some of these translation work. But then today, if you look at it, newer kind of roles have started coming in, niche pro work areas have come in and, and, and this could be of a big help for you. Thanks a lot, sir. And yeah, so uh, I kind of understand what you're trying to say. So, you know, even if you've taken a very traditional, conventional 
degree, uh, like you mentioned about literature or somebody as a research or, um, uh, or just, just maybe like a, a very niche thing like statistics and stuff like that. Uh, there are plenty more options uh, in today's world, uh, apart from the core work, like you mentioned, literature, it's not always related to just, you know, uh, uh, copywriting, editing, or books and stuff like that. There could be a lot more, you know, uh, uh, opportunities that are there, uh, which, which I really uh, know. And I think technology also provides a lot more opportunities uh, in that, in that uh, regard. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, I think I'm not sure if Santosh is able to join. So other panelists, and you know, he had some network issues, so he's still not up here. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll give give him some time while he joins. Uh, meanwhile, uh, you know, people who are here, uh, uh, you can type in your questions on the chat window. Uh, if you've already shared your question on the registration page, uh, we will. Uh, go through those questions, but if you have any other questions as 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 the session goes, uh, feel free to type in your question on the chat window. Uh, you know that'll be that'll be uh, really helpful. Or, you know, feel free to just put your hand up, uh, and uh, you know you can ask the question uh, straight away here. Yeah, uh, that'd be great. Uh, I also want to just maybe just take a little detour. Uh, yeah, you know, we we also have some of our students who are studying. Um, yeah, you know, outside uh, India, and you know, they moved during the pandemic. Um, and one of them is Sushil. Uh, thanks for joining in. I also wanted to just, just in the light of what we spoke about, you know, uh, choosing a different path or like moving to something new. Um, you were working. Um, you know, you made a choice to you know take a break and go into studies. Um, how did you really go about that, especially? considering the pandemic situation and all of that. So what made you take that step and uh, how, how did you make that uh, move? Thanks, Malki. Um, so I can probably answer this question like two parts. So there's a, a, one, like one group of individuals where they know exactly what they wanna do. And so they just dive right in. Like I can give an example of my sister from like the, from the eighth grade, she knew that she wanted to get into medicine. So it was, for her, it was a very easy path um, to choose the college, to choose the course. And and then the second group in, of individuals, I fall into that. And after I completed my BCom, I wasn't too sure about what I wanted to do, right? And I felt at that point, um, the right path for me was to, to start working. And I knew I wanted to get into like a accounting, taxation, or financial um, role. So that's when I worked with KPMG and, and it was, a, I think after two and a half years, I decided to just step out and, and take a year off and, and just focus on what I want to do for my future. So, and then that was like in the thick of the pandemic. And that's when a lot of the universities went online and I was just like, I'm not going to course and putting in so much money into a course and and just sitting online and doing it so there were a few factors um that i had looked at uh when selecting a course so for some of you there may there may be like a dream country that you want to like move to um for some of you there may be certain dream schools that you want to apply to so at least the process that i went through was um there were certain parameters that i i was looking at so when I wanted to select the country, I looked at um, the work opportunities there, and then there's something called a post-study work visa that some countries offer once you're done with the course. So, and the second, the third thing when I uh, was looking at that, I wanted to move to like an English-speaking country because language for me was a huge problem. Um, so, when, at least when you're selecting the country, this is what I was looking at, and. So the few countries that at least lined up to my um, research were, were like the UK and Ireland. And the second thing, at least when I was working, I realized that what I what I like and what I don't like. And when you when you start working, you work with different people from different teams and different verticals of a company, and you know that, what you eventually want to do. So when I was working, I think. I worked backwards. I, I kind of figured out what, what my ultimate professional goal is. 
and and then I started working backwards. So to get to that place, what kind of qualif qualification would I need? What kind of work experience would I need? So that's when I decided like I need a specialized master's instead of like an MBA. And I decided to do a master's in finance. So that's where your, your course is checked off, right? And when you decide on your course, you, you start looking at, hey, what are the best courses in these countries? Which are the best schools? And another important thing that I was looking at was um, the college as well, right? And what, what, what's the ranking of the colleges worldwide or even in that country? And you start shortlisting your list of schools and you see the brand value that that uh, school has, you see the ranking that that school has. And, and then once you start shortlisting those schools, you look at the course, you see what are the modules that are being offered? What are the subjects that they're teaching in that course? And, and then you have to like, just analyze for yourself if those modules interest you, if those modules um, align to your interests and, and your passions, and just at least give you that uh, trajectory for your, for your ultimate like professional goal. Um, so these were like the few factors that I looked at and, and I think Trinity College Dublin, at least for me was um, the perfect choice in terms of brand value, in terms of ranking and in terms of like just the subjects that they, that they teach uh, at college. So I think that was my experience. Um, All right, thank you. Thank you, Sushil, thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, so if anybody is looking for any uh, more details about Elena studies outside India, uh, you know, uh, just ping Sushil, uh, and there are also a couple of other people, Nikita and Gabriella, so they can they can help you and give some guidance uh, around it. Um, thank you, thank you, Sushil. Yeah, just going back to uh, uh, Sir uh, Prabhu Sir um, uh, now. Uh, so there is, you know, we spoke about you know, how do we come out of this pandemic, you know, uh, manage, you know, so, so things that are impacted through the pandemic, right? So one of the questions that came is, is there, uh, is there is something like a best stream to choose uh, at this point in time, right? You know, I think back 10, 15 years back, you know, the whole computer science, IT was what the in thing, right? Uh, so is there in the current scheme of things, are there any um, a particular stream that is uh, that gives a better career uh, opportunity, uh, be it science or computer science or um, you know or, or management studies. So is there is there anything uh, particular uh, in the, uh, things like that? Okay, so uh, choosing a career, uh, one is uh, we're looking at whether we're looking at a kind of a short term kind of a career growth or you're going to be kind of a long term in terms of what we are looking at over a period of time. Uh, See, the pandemic in itself is a blip. It's like a, a two-year or three-year kind of a slope. It's either it could be a new normal from then on, and we're going to focus on uh, maybe three years, five years down the line, we would have got used to it. Uh, so when you talk about choosing a career, we need to keep in mind choosing something that will sustain us over a period of time. Uh, see, there are two aspects to it. I mean, like, you know, even when we do a kind of a management program, I can talk from there. Uh, one of the things that generally people try to uh, tell others to avoid is to go for a super speciality because sometimes when you do take a super speciality program, uh, if that particular area kind of goes down, uh, then it becomes a kind of a challenge. So that's why most MBA uh, institutes offer broader kind of specializations to it. I mean, it could be something on a marketing. Yes, they do have something like, you know, tourism management is a kind of a niche they're given, but then it's a larger scope in itself. Uh, I, I remember the one of the institutes that I worked with, uh, one of the top institutes, B schools, they did offer uh, a postgrad diploma in, in uh, construction management. Um, now, this was typically for people who have done uh, civil engineering or architect. Uh, the reason why they started this program, this I'm talking about in 2008-9, was there was this big, uh, you know, uh, boom in terms of real, real, uh, real sector, reality sector a lot of these uh, commercial ventures were coming up, residential areas. So it was in Bangalore, they started this program. Four years down the line, they couldn't sustain. I mean, like no, they were able to get the students, but then placeability of these students became a challenge. Uh, because even when, when you talk about uh, these uh, real estate sector, they were trying to look for a 
niches were never kind of a need for them. It's about someone who has got a strong uh, marketing background, accounting skill for them in terms of venture, uh, not in terms of these niches. And it kind of, it faded away. So it, some of these specialty courses could be a fad. You know, it can have a kind of a quicker growth and then it will also come down. Uh, what we need to look in for is any program. If you look at every single thing, be it in terms of commerce, be it in the science. I mean, medical science is really evolving right now thanks to the kind of things that we're seeing around. Uh, but then uh, be it IT or be it in terms of uh, uh, the programs, the general uh, degrees that we're doing, look for something that lines with your passion and look for something that you feel it's not just about the next two years because this one or two years is going to be uh, different because we need to look at a longer term. I mean, you know, is it something that's going to be a game changer over a period of time? You know, right now it's COVID, uh, maybe you're not able to get these things on certain uh, industries or certain kind of sectors. You never know five years, 10 years down the line, it's gonna be completely a, a different kind of a thing. So look for a program, Look, we need to look for a course that could sustain us. I mean, like, no, uh, looking at a short term about the next five months, I need to get a job, so I'll do a program, may not really be a long lasting one uh, because we are in a, a constantly, you know, change is the only constant thing here. Uh, things are changing rapidly. Every six months, there are some newer kind of things that are coming up. Uh, so adaptability is a key. Um, we need to be open to learn. We need to be open to take up newer kind of things in terms of understanding these things. Uh, so if you ask me, uh, is commerce best, science best, or, or even in terms of management, I tell you, uh, each has its own aura when, when you study it. I mean, like, no, uh, my, maybe the suggestion would be not to look on a, uh, an immediate kind of focus uh, and, and look at long-term sustainability. I was happy uh, when Sushil spoke about it. I mean, like, no, uh, two years of work uh, made him clearly understand where he needs to head next. Uh, maybe right out of co commerce college might be a different thing. Maybe the two years he has spent in KPMG in the working, he knew where his, his focus needs to be. And, and, and that, that is a kind of a good way. Uh, and this really has, you know, made him, you know, plan his progression for a, a kind of a thing. So that's my kind of a, a take on it. Yeah, just, just one follow-up question, sir, just around that. You know, like you rightly mentioned, today there are courses which, which, offers multiple specialization, even in uh, undergraduation, right? You know, people, uh, they, they almost have like more than four or five specializations. So uh, choosing a course uh, at, for, at an undergraduate level, is that something which is good because you have a lot of areas to choose with when you're going into a high studies or work option. Uh, what do you think about, you know, courses uh, like that, which has multiple uh, disciplines? Okay, um, so right from even in undergrad, I decided to start with undergrad. I mean, like, no, years back, we had five or six subjects, you know, courses to choose from. You had a commerce, you had a history, literature, yeah. uh, and possibly economic. These are the things outside of the sciences. You know, you have BSc science. Today, if you look at, I mean, like, no, I'm, I'm sure a, a brochure of uh, a Joseph's, um, you know, undergrad programs or a Christ would list on a whole close to around 50 to 20 or different courses they do. Uh, you know, uh, earlier we used to have biotechnology as one subject. We studied biotechnology. Today, uh, you know, biochemistry itself is a separate major altogether. You talk about, uh, you know, biophysics is a separate thing. You talk about microbiology. You know, uh, it's no more biotechnology. That, that's the thing. I mean, there are finer specializations that's come up. Uh, definitely that is, uh, you know, uh, coming to the market. Uh, undergrad programs are typically those that gives you a kind of feel of, uh, you know, every aspect of a subject. You know, master's is typically a specialization part of it. I mean, like, you know, when you do a BCom, uh, you get a, a touch and go of every aspect of, uh, you know, an organizational setup in terms from the, uh, from the subject area, right, from accounting. But when you get into kind of a deeper sense, something like a master's program, you'll find that niche come in. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering the question. My, my, my answer here in this particular case would be, when you look at masters, you can really look at it because you would be more focused. You know where you stand at that point in time. Someone right after school education, uh, you're still in a kind of a time where your mind would keep changing based on what we see around. But when you, someone is entering into a 
this program, you know, around about 22, 23, or someone has taken a gap year to wait and look for a program, uh, they would have, the, the focus would be completely different. You know, even for many of us, maybe uh, put ourselves in the shoe, when we started our course in the first year and how we are when we are in the closer to the graduation time, our perspective changes about the program. I mean, like, you know, when you entered, you entered because some of your friends took the subject. You, you chose the college, you chose the subject because, you know, your neighboring friend or closest friend took that subject. But the time you land up in the final year heading towards, uh, you know, a, a master's program or a career, uh, enter perspective changes. So uh, I, would, uh, I would ideally say when you have these diversified subjects, the good thing is uh, experience is the one that really will help you out. I mean, like, you no. Know, uh, Undergrad level, there are a lot of peer pressures about what you choose. And the postgraduate, it's not the peer pressure that defines where you're going to head, but rather it is own uh, will and what you want to do. You know, uh, your choices and your kind of, uh, you know, plan uh, makes it more essential in terms of choosing a program rather than an external influence. Marketers do influence you, colleges influence you with the kind of the program, with all the packages, but then a lot of focus and decision making happens by yourself. I can also tell you uh, at a school level heading into an undergrad, most of your decision makings are, uh, you know, influenced by your parents. You know, your parents choose what program you need to do. I mean, like, because they have certain kind of liking towards, you know, I want my son to maybe be a, a chartered accountant or a doctor, or engineer. There is always a greater kind of push from the parents at an undergrad level. That's why most of them take a degree because if you ask them a kind of a, a survey, uh, I'm, I'm sure even in this group of 22 or 23 that we have, uh, at least a 60 to 70 percent of them would have chosen an undergrad degree because my parents wanted me to study that course. It's not because I wanted to do it. Parents said, like, you know, this is a good college. This is a good course. I want you to study because why maybe uh, one of their colleagues' kids graduated here. They saw a thing. But then when they head on to a post-graduation, the entire matrix completely changes. 60 to 70% of the students who choose a master's program choose it primarily because by which time they realize that this is what I want to be. Here. This is where I, I prefer to head in. And, and that really, uh, you know, brings in. And, and, and that's why you find a more serious set of people when the transition happens. Uh, as he was Shishira mentioning, there are a set of students who are very clear, you know, grade seven, eight, so they decide where they want to head. You know, but then that numbers are very minimal in our society. You know, very, you know, for a class of 40 or 50 odd, you'll have maybe 10 to 20 percent of them with that kind of a thing. Uh, but most of us fall in the second category where we wait for something to happen and then start looking at it. And, and, and there's no harm in it. I mean, like, no, uh, you know, it's, it's one life we can explore, we can study, we can learn, we can fail, we can bounce back. So it's all part of it. Thank you, sir. Um, I was also wanting to just check uh, from the participants. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, you can unmute and uh, ask your question uh, straight away. Any questions from anyone? Or, yeah, I could ask the questions that you have put in the uh, registration, but yeah, it'll be good if you could, uh, uh, you know, ask directly. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's maybe uh, because of time. So uh, uh, just as a follow up question to that, uh, what are the things that we should one should look into, you know, before choosing a university? Are there any explicit things that uh, somebody needs to look into while choosing a university? Yes, choosing an university is important, especially, uh, I don't know, is it about choosing an university in our country or abroad? Uh, I, will, I will try to give both these yeah. perspectives, yeah. what sure. we do. Uh, let's start with, uh, it's more or less, it's identical, except for in terms of choosing the country, choosing the state, choosing the resources is what, as you mentioned. But within the country, if you talk about it, uh, choosing a program, uh, we need to look at, uh, one, is the nature of the institute. You know, what kind of, if you look at uh, going abroad and, and studying, uh, you know, there are categorizations of institutes. There are these public institutes, uh, which are the state institutes, universities that are there. 
and also the private players you now players like harvard that are there with a the big 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 kind of players as such um, one is no uh, the kind of the institute they are looking at uh, most of them would have chosen a program when they start looking at it so i'm not talking about what program you're going to study you're primarily with the understanding that you have decided i'm going to do my masters abroad i'm going to do my bachelor's in medicine abroad or i'm going to do my masters in maybe it so when you dis have decided on what program you're going to choose then you start looking at which are the institute that offer the kind of the program uh, now when you talk about the universities as i said uh, private universities do charge a lot in terms of the fee uh, the public universities have a trustworthy component of it most of them are 100 year old universities i i i i work closely with uh, mr santosh as well who might join uh, in some time uh, they they worked with universities that had around 120 130 year history in terms of it credibility of the institute matters more when you choose a program because you're going to spend a lot of money uh, so that is one uh, the second important thing in that is whether it is an accredited university you know you're going to invest money uh, and then you need to know whether it's really a, a, that paper is going to worth at the end of the day that's important when you talk about india look for colleges or institutes or universities that are approved by the ugc you know not all private universities uh, private players are uh, approved you know you have the deemed universities are there ugc continuously uploads a list every summer saying that these are the list of fake universities in india please be watchful about uh, when you are applying for uh, your college admissions now this list gets revised every year every year ugc identifies some universities as uh, they are very very uh, not a uh, you know good one these are absolutely fake universities please do not go ahead and do it the reason is when you do programs through them uh, you cannot do further studies because it will not because any foreign university will ask are you part of aiu all india universities you know are you connected with this thing are you registered by a governing body within the country and and your certificates will not be verified especially if you plan to go abroad uh and your certificate documents need to be verified uh egc would say like this is not a a a program that is actually verified by us the same way when you get a, a outside the country outside when you talk about a management programs and all you have a uh, certain accrediting agencies are the acsb acsb so these uh, accrediting bodies uh, you know accredit a value of the program so look for colleges look for university look for institutions that are accredited in nature uh, but even today if you look at it there are a lot of institutes that send you advertisements over your phone on whatsapp it comes you know on facebook we see a lot of these institutes saying that uh, enroll for a, a masters program in this particular country within uh, you can get your degree here just be watchful about the accreditation so first choose your college see that whether the college has the right accreditation if you are not clear about it please reach out to an accrediting agency and ask them uh, is this university or a college accredited by you there's no harm if you're going to write to the same college i would say they'll give a whole bunch of document i would say go to some third party verifier just get it verified by the because you're going to invest money and the money should not go waste at the end of 3 or 4 years and especially if you're going for something like a masters just need to be uh, watchful about it the third option is you also need to understand whether that country has a scope for that particular subject you know if you talk talk about engineering people talk about germany as as one of the the, the best countries to learn uh, you know management is still the us that really gives you that kind of an aura uh, uk gives you program that helps you you know quicken your you know your completion of course it's about a year and then you can uh, roll out so you look for countries whether they are uh, you know have these centers of excellence for your area you know if i want to do some marine technology look for places countries which have that kind of infrastructure facilities is your college or university situated around these places where that can get you the best learning experience you know a lot of people would have stand alone buildings giving uh, you know or by night kind of degrees that they roll in you enroll and then you get it but look whether the college the city that you're choosing the country that you're choosing is known for this particular program uh, you know medicine you know the countries that they're looking for engineering you know what could be the best countries so choose places where they're known for these programs and not because it is affordable as well you know not uh, you know sometimes uh, 
it's affordable, so I'm going to go there. No, look whether it is, uh, it's a good place. And then even when Sushu was saying, he said he also looked in kind of opportunities, know whether there is a kind of a, the, right after you complete the thing, there is an extension of visa for you to work, an internship kind of a thing. Look for, you know, those options before you choose it. You know, uh, doing a program because you're going to invest a certain amount of time. You're investing your time, you're investing your money, you're investing all your resources to earn something. So when you're choosing a program, uh, choose the university that fits your thing. See that it's accredited by an agency. Uh, look at the scope of the program that the thing offers. I mean, like now if you, if you uh, the classic is Berkeley's. Berkeley's, I mean, off late, we are getting a lot of people with Berkeley's music program. It has become a very strong kind of uh, thing. Getting a scholarship is, is, is one of the most sought after. Um, I had one of our students recently, um, she got herself enrolled into New York University and, and interestingly her scholarship was almost 120% right from everything, her living expense to the travel was funded by the, uh, the university themselves, uh, but the progress, process was a regular one. During her schooling uh, last December, uh, they did an all paid expense to come and make a visit the campus uh, as part of the admission. You know, today universities do all out effort to attract the right talent in terms of uh, thing. So when you are applying for a college in a university, look at your alumni network as well. See how big the alumni network, where they are actually placed. You know, can you see a pattern in these people? I mean, like, no, uh, where they land up, what kind of program they do. Look at the list of programs that they offer. Uh, so these are some of the things that we need to really pick up when we choose places. You know. Uh, it's no more that affordability part comes in picture, you know, because they give me an affordable degree, I'm gonna choose uh, because there are a lot of institutes that are mushrooming. Uh, I can tell you just the stat of, in terms of management, uh, 20, 25 years back, if you look at uh, the number of management institutions that have been at the hundred in our country, not more than that, which offered. Today, if you talk about even a, a state like Karnataka, that will be close to around 12 to 13,000 institutes that offer management programs. Things are completely have changed. Every college offers programs. So we need to be watchful about where we do a program. Uh, and that is important. Especially, I, I will still insist, uh, if you are really having second thoughts about a college, it, most problems might be true. So it's always good not to go do a proper homework of knowing about the institutes. OK, uh, so that is one of the things that I thought I'd yeah. share. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maybe uh, some of the students can also mention. Yeah. Look at so I just want to ask uh, uh, Gabby. Uh, so how, how how did you go about uh, you know shortlisting uh, a college? Uh, you know, you finally ended up in uh, Dublin. Uh, so how did you go about that whole process? Anything practical that you would like to share? Yeah, I mean, I'm professor covered so many, and so did Sushil. But I feel like um, just want to reiterate, like you know, a lot of us. Um, aren't exactly always sure exactly what we want to do. And so I'm definitely one of these people. Um, I felt like for me, I changed a lot over the course of my time. For example, I finished my undergrad and then I worked for about five years before getting into my master's. And that was not my original plan. Um, very honestly speaking. So I, for some reason, always wanted to study at NUS Singapore. And so when I joined, um, I'm, I mean, when I finished my undergrad and I started working, I was quite sure I'm gonna work for two years and then, you know, plan towards that. And I feel like, um, you know, as everyone's been sharing so far, so much has been changing in the world that slowly I realized um, maybe an MBA is not what is for me. And so I continued working, um, you know, to think through what I wanted to do before I came to Dublin. And, um, you know, like mentioned before, I think for me as well, one of the things that I was very keen on is I wanted to study in a good, well-known university. Um, and um, what that means is, you know, getting into the top 10 or top 20 may not always be feasible. There's so many factors that go into that. But I feel um, for me, there were a few other factors that I probably factored in that, you know, may not have been mentioned. And that was, for example, time and distance. Um, I'm sure a lot of you may be thinking of um, maybe not being too far away from home, even if you wanted to go abroad. And for me, that was one of the things that I was thinking of as well, and it helped shortlist a few of the country options that I had. And apart from that time, um, a lot of the universities from a master's perspective give you an option of either doing it you know, in two years or one year. And uh, for me, I was quite sure, for, I, 
just a simple reason. I think I did five years of work and I wanted to do a master's and I knew there was an option of doing it in one year. So one of the factors that I looked into when I was looking at my programs is the fact that which country is offered master's that you could finish in a year. And when that came up, it was either the UK or Ireland. And then I went into, you know, shortlisting, for example, okay, which country would be best if, you know, I wanted to work there for a few years, at least after I finished. And that's when I realized, you know, Ireland, for example, had this um, two-year work visa where even if you didn't land a full-time job in those two years, you could still stay back in the country and continue looking until the end of that two-year period for you to find the right job. So I think for me, when I was genuinely looking at, you know, which was the right university for me, one, it was the time I wanted to finish it in one year. Um, and number two, I wanted to be able to work there for a few years and to have time to be able to find what I wanted to do, because I'm still someone like, I think when Sushil was saying, he said he knew he wanted to get into this line of work when he finished, he knew it was auditing and tax. I didn't have that. I'd worked in the operations division when I finished with Goldman Sachs and Investment Bank. And I'm still very happy to go try anything else in the sector, but I knew it was going to be aligned with finance. So I think those are a few things that I definitely thought of. And um, just one more thing is, uh, like I was mentioning you, it's good to know if you want to study abroad or, I mean, if you want to stay abroad or you want to come back home. Um, I think that should be factored a lot into your decision making, because if you want to come back home to India, um, it's good that you really pick a university that's well known, even in our country, if you're going abroad. Otherwise, when you come back, the value, though, though in that country, that university may be great. If you come back home and then try to look for jobs, if the people in our country do not know that university, it won't be you know, easy maybe for you to get the job that you want. And that is something I've seen in a lot of my friends and my sister as well. So for me, when I was speaking, I was quite sure that I wanted to work abroad at least for a few years, though my end is to come back home. I knew at least to work about for a few years and Ireland gave me that option and it had a great university like Trinity that's still well known and that's how I picked it. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Um, all right, let's just uh, go back to Sir. All right, so, so there's also another question about, uh, you know, more as a generic, uh, uh, question about you know engineering and science for example you know for bsc science computer science versus engineering you know because one is a professional study so is there a kind of a, a big difference or it is uh, more to do with choices uh, and, um, and and just an uh, additional question to that is like how to manage uh, the job without affecting your academics and if somebody is doing you know studies and then they're also working how how how, how can they handle uh, both these things uh, not together so any any suggestions so the first one is more about science and uh, engineering uh, computer science and then uh, you know when somebody's doing both studies and work together how better they can manage that okay i, I think the first part uh, you're the right person to talk about it because you did your if I'm not wrong, you did your computer science, right? Undergrad, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you did your master's in business administration. Yeah. So yeah. I, I thought maybe you might be alright, but the second part definitely I'll be able to sure. help sure. in terms of. So I'll talk about the second part in terms of, uh, you know, working and and studying. Uh, I think that is uh, that's a growing kind of phenomenon, especially in a place like Bangalore. I'm sure the West is is known for that. Uh, you know, wor working through your studies. So that is something that has been there. In India, there is always this kind of a, a mindset, you know, if you're studying, complete all your studies, please don't go and work. Now you need to focus on your grades and all those things were there. But then I think that is slowly changing in the last few years. Uh, again, this is a typically a kind of uh, the city phenomenon that's there. Uh, India in itself has got, still doesn't have plenty of options for people to do both together. Uh, but that being said, uh, most of them who are actually, uh, you know, doing this both together, you know, taking up a part-time work to fund their education or could be to, uh, you know, as a saving for a future thing. Uh, most of them are pretty serious about what they do. I mean, like, you no, know, that, that shows an element of seriousness. Uh, and, and like, you no, know, gone are the days when I, I remember those uh, things when you know, people used to say, 
I'm I'm studying here, but I'm working in a petrol station. I'm I, I don't have any any anything against it. You know, gas station for uh, to fund my thing. I'm doing a part time. Today, what is interesting is at, at least that few of the students who who went through uh, uh, one of the colleges that I was connected with uh, a few years back. Uh, they took up options within uh, the university stems itself. I mean, like, you no know, beat as a kind of an assistance to the staff. So there could be the research assistants or academic associates. And that really gave them a tremendous kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's a two way. One, you're still very much closer with your staff in terms of gaining more and more knowledge. It also makes sure that, you know, you're able to utilize that particular thing uh, and you get paid for that as well. Um, you know, uh, you're right in, in terms of uh, work coming in when people are taking it up. In India, I still don't see much of it. I, I don't know, Bangalore might have that options, Chennai and Mumbai, those big cities might have it. But you look at the smaller towns and second rung uh, cities, the tier two cities, uh, this is still a kind of, a, a, you know, a phenomenon that is said to catch up. And I think it is only right that if, if it starts in because that can bring in more focus on in students' uh, mindset about doing studies. Uh, it also gets them prepared about how they handle their money, the finances as well. Uh, that is something that we always missed out. You know, we, we talk about handling finances, but then a program like this, I mean, not being allied to some workplace to fund your education, you are, you are better prepared in planning your finances. I always envy people who are staying in a hostel and study uh, for that matter, because they're able to keep themselves, you know, uh, maintain themselves. They will be able to, you know, take care of their planning well. I mean, like, you know, everyday life. You know, it's always a contrast. You know, I stayed with my parents for a certain number of years. I went for studies for my master's in university. I tell you, a lot of, you know, day-to-day -day, uh, application of life I learned when I was in that particular dorm. I stayed there, you know, I had to find a way to manage my finances. We didn't have work, I'm sorry, but then with this current generation, you have that work thing coming in. So you have money in your hand, uh, you, you are studying, you know, it's an equal challenge as well. I mean, you know, sometimes you want to just splurge the money on things that you want to buy. At the same time, there are people, I remember students selling, I'm actually saving the money so that I can pay off my, some of the loans that I took for my studies when I did it. And that, that is brilliant to hear. Uh, so most of the people who actually, take up a part-time job, off late, I see them, they don't take it just for the fun of mere money that is coming in to have a kind of a, a good time during the studies, but rather they are very serious about uh, the job. And, and I think uh, that's what I would say, uh, essence of picking up a job uh, during your studies, it's not necessary. And, and most of them, there are a lot of learnings that come for them in terms of that, yeah. yeah thank you, sir. Anybody uh, in, the, in the participant list, anybody doing studies and uh, uh, working? Currently, or maybe have done it in the past. Do you want to just put uh, put your hands, wave, or put in the chat? Do we have anybody? No, none. Still waiting. There is somebody. Uh, who's that? Uh... Melky, that's me, Taruna, but that was just a while back. I did work. In... <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's still relevant, Karuna. I mean, do you wanted to share anything? Um, well, actually, I started working at 16. That was first PUC. Yeah. Wow. When I looked back, I mean, at that point, I didn't think I was so young. So looking back, <laughs> I think it was early, but uh, a lot of the work was voluntary. It was only uh, in, I think, first or second year at college that there were professors who saw that I was uh, working and then actually introduced me to uh, people who needed, you know, work to be done on a professional basis. So uh, in hindsight, I think I, I, I was only really looking at uh, helping out. I didn't even think it was a job, but there were multiple things, right, from doing uh, radio shows to writing, editing, the designing actually happened later. Um, so there were multiple things along the way. And when I look back, I actually did nine years of uh, work that was largely voluntary, or I would say not paid for because I went without that expectation. I wouldn't say it's always the right thing because um, there will be requirements to be compensated for what you do. But 
uh, from a believer's perspective, uh, God is mindful. At the end of the day, we work for him. And I can see the, uh, the return on investment. If you want to look at it that way, I can see so much that I gained because I started working young. So uh, whatever opportunity came my way, I wouldn't say no. Like if uh, they needed something, if there was a requirement for printing, I was, I started working on annual reports. I remember I, I couldn't understand it, but then that forced me to un learn it. And all of that has helped me now. So uh, I think if there are opportunities as a student, if there are opportunities that come your way, um, I do see the younger generation in a way who are very clear about the financial compensation. But uh, quite often I say, you know what, from my experience, don't look at that as your first thing. Look at what you're going to learn. There's always learning in, the, in a job. So uh, for me, that has actually been pivotal in my entire journey as a professional. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Corona. I think there was also another question just on the uh, uh, design aspect because you know you uh, you come from the design background, right? So, uh, any suggestions on uh, you know where somebody can learn basics and advanced graphic design? Uh, are there any courses or institution where they can study? Uh, I know Udemy is one of the online stuff which they can really refer to. Uh, this is by Ashish. Um, uh, but are there any institution or anything that they can, that you would suggest? Uh, honestly, I'm actually not the right person to answer in terms of studying because I've never studied design or art. Uh, I've always wanted to, but uh, didn't at that point in time. For me, my, my learning happened on the job, which is why I say that, you know, uh, taking up assignments to work when I was a student is what actually trained me in design because I naturally liked art and design. But now I think there's so much more available. There's Skillshare that is really good. Um, now this may not give you credits in terms of um, like an official degree, but if you look at even Instagram, one thing is to kind of, uh, as an artist or a creative, I think it happens in every area. What we feed is what really uh, will show in our work or in what we say or do. So um, I actually, you know, you choose the artists you want to look at the designers look at their life story, their journey. So many of them have actually not been formally trained and some of them are actually on Skillshare now offering their learning. So that's one thing that I do, um, look at uh, these artists. In terms of design schools, there's a lot more online, but I think um, Sushil and Gabby, you know, what they shared about their, um, the way they made their choices, I think that would also apply uh, to this. Beyond that, I honestly don't feel I'm well qualified in terms of a course since I, uh, I yeah, can do sure. that. Yeah. yeah, so one of the things, I think this question is from Ashish. Uh, Ashish, you can do is there's, there's a lot of online stuff that is available. A lot of uh, graphic designers. I manage a team of graphic designers uh, in my office. We do a lot of design work. A lot of them have studied more, uh, you know, a lot of self-learning and doing a lot of projects of their own, right? Uh, there's, like I said, Udemy is one of the online options courses that I, that is available. You can learn a lot of, you know, there's, the courses are quite cheap as well. Um, and, you know, you can do a lot of sample projects and that's how, you know, people uh, learn. So, yeah, so uh, if, if you need more help, uh, Ashish, you can, you can drop a note uh, to me. I can, I can get connected with you. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, thanks, Karuna. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll just uh, close in on the question on uh, science and uh, and engineering. Yeah, I, I did my uh, you know masters in uh, software science and you know and of course then moved to management. I think it's one big difference that I see. Of course, engineering is seen more as a um, you know as a professional. Uh, study right as opposed to doing a BSc or a MSc, which is still you know not recognized as a professional study. So of course, there is a little bit of edge when you go into career because a lot of companies they have uh, you know a basic requirement as be as a professional you know uh, uh, requirement and stuff. But of course, that is fading off now. But uh, you know, up until like three four years back, uh, professional education was you know kind of uh, 
preferred over a, a regular, uh, you know, uh, B, BSc or MSc studies. But having said that, there's not much of a, you know, I don't see much of a difference in the syllabus as such. And most often, you know, they teach the same thing if you take computer science. Uh, a lot of the subjects, uh, you know, are the same. Um, uh, except that maybe in engineering, there could be a lot more aspects, uh, uh, you know, associated around a computer uh, science. Could be like hardware or, uh, you know, a little more on the, uh, the programming logics and, uh, you know, a little depth in the uh, software coding and stuff could be in uh, part of it. Whereas, you know, a BSc computer science would still be, you know, uh, at, uh, at maybe just at the programming language uh, level. So uh, to me, I don't see a much of a difference, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you can look at, uh, like we discussed in the past, uh, you know, look at the syllabus, what are the courses or the subjects that is incorporated in each of, you know, whichever college that you're choosing. Uh, I think that will really help you uh, choose between. Yeah, so regarding, uh, quickly, I'll just talk about the scientific, in terms of biology, uh, what the thing is. Uh, if anyone wants to specialize in biology, I mean, anyway, we need to start with the undergrad thing. Uh, it's about either zoology, we don't have biology as a major. It's always zoology, botany, or all these specialty programs off late that has come as biochemistry, uh, microbiology, genetics, immunology, a whole bunch of these subjects are there. Uh, what I would suggest is if there is someone who is keen on getting into the field of uh, you know, medical research, trying to understand, uh, two options are there, even as if there is someone who is still in their uh, grade 11, 12, or if there is someone who is in the college doing the bachelor's degree, uh, the best way to try and understand if this is an area that's going to interest you, this is something that's going to, you know, connect with you in terms of future, I would say go and, uh, you know, enroll for some of these programs in Coursera or edX, uh, you know, typically in terms of these science programs. I mean, you know, you can audit a program so where you don't need to pay for it, just run through these sessions. See, if this is a topic that really interests you, at the end of the day, uh, any of these finer research-based thing and, and thing, talk about cancer biology, talk about immunology at, at a master's level or a doctorate level, uh, you know, basic degree is mandatory. It's going to come only at the master's level. What I would suggest is take up a program in one of these uh, online platforms, uh, try and attend two or three lectures. Possibly if you want to earn a certificate, go ahead and do that. See if that is an area that interests you, if this is what you really want to specialize in, want to focus your career. And then that works, it, it helps you prepare yourself when you get onto your master's program. And most of these uh, wonderful, you know, biology-based research are primarily in the Western world. We still, I mean, IIC is still one of the premier institutes that we have, but beyond it, if you're looking at a going abroad, going West, the good thing is equipping ourselves with a good platform in terms of a basic understanding of these subjects. And usually our undergrad programs do cater to a wider audience, but if you really want to focus more in those areas, I would say taking some of these courses, uh, you know, MIT has a lot of open courses available, open uh, platforms available. MIT courses are there uh, for people to do it. It's on a whole bunch of courses. It, it has courses on history and music, art, literature, you know, and these are free. These are uh, university professors' uh, slides and presentations and lecture notes that are there. You can go and do your program, and these are free. Typically, you can, uh, can go for an open program. Uh, most universities now have these kind of platforms. You know, they use a MOOC way of trying to reach out with free kind of a thing. Go and pick some of these courses for free, enroll for free. See if there is something that you can, because sometimes uh, when you look at, uh, you know, these beautiful terminologies, we get really interested but then when you actually log in or join the particular program in the masters we find it difficult to sustain you know uh, most trend talks about how many people enroll for a program we uh, you know at the data that is very minimal is that how many actually graduate out of these colleges you know most of them there's always a dropout that happens because you lose interest over a period of time maybe you you felt this is what the subject is and and you realize it's much more stronger in terms of content. It's not something that, that really connects with you and you want to take a career change. Uh, I, I remember the student who went, uh, did an MBA. Interestingly, uh, she realized MBA is not the area because she did her engineering here in India. She went for US to do her uh, master's program in management. Midway through the program, she realized MBA is not her thing. But then uh, what she did was she was able to graduate her MBA. 
she joined an MS computer science in the same university and then graduated again with another degree as well. So that, that really happens. So my suggestion is today we have opportunities. We have a lot of online platforms. We have enough content available, even on YouTube. You can go to the university uh, YouTube pages. You have enough of these lectures that are available. See that those are things that excite you. If this is what you would love, I mean, if you if you plan to go to a particular university, have thought about it, visit your pages, look at your lectures, look at the videos that they have. See if there's somewhere you feel, you know, interested about this program. This is what you're looking at. Go ahead and think that might be the, uh, one of the ways that you can think about. Yeah, I think, uh, thank you, sir. I think that was uh, really helpful. I think uh, one of the blessings what, uh, you know, people, the students have today is to do that. Uh, you know, uh, maybe a pilot, I would call it, uh, you know, course or so, you know, I think it gives you, uh, you yourself uh, an opportunity to test whether you, you know, whether you are, is this what you want to do? You know, sometimes we are driven by, uh, you know, a quick passion and stuff. And then after getting into the course, we realize, oh man, this is not what I looked for, <laughs> right? Uh, we never had an option uh, 10, 15 years back. Uh, uh, it's all what we have to go and do to physically, but I think there's a lot of online courses, uh, you know, we talk about if you, if you think about biology or any other, any other stream, there's always a short course. If you just take that, you would know, is that what you really want to do? And uh, thank you. Thank you for that suggestion, sir. I think that was uh, uh, really helpful. Uh, good. Uh, I think the question was uh, from Ankita. So Ankita, did you have any follow-up questions around it? Yeah, one more question. Um, so like there are many universities like IIT and NIT, triple ITs also, they're offering like BTEC plus MTech as well, like five years you can do it all together. So they're offering that. So is it worth it like getting a master like that or writing and like, studying four years BTEC and then studying two years MTech after writing gate? Which one is better? Like? Okay, uh, so if, if these degrees are offered by like NITs and IITs or ISC, uh, it is worth it. I mean, because they're not small institutions, but I'm sure when they offer a program like that, uh, it is gonna have the rigor what is needed to really you know come out of it. Uh, you know, this is about someone, I mean, like you no know, most universities, awfully they have these integrated programs, integrated MSCs, integrated MTech. So it's about a, a full five year, uh, so it's typically our mindset whether we would be able to, you know, be willing to go through the trigger of a five year of a complete kind of an academic kind of, uh, you know, uh, work to really scale it up. That's what is uh, important. I think in terms of credibility, quality of the programs, we can vouch for it. It definitely would be good. It, it's more to do with the student and their intent to really graduate out of it. Uh, but most of these people also, players also would give you an option where after two or three years, you feel you're finding it difficult. You can take a break and, and convert it to as a bachelor's degree and exit. So that option also, most universities offer that in today's time. Uh, because they know after two years, three years, they find it strenuous to really complete this thing. And so you have those options. But if it's from the institutes that you're talking about, like IITs or NITs or IITs or ISC, um, there is there is no, no question of credibility. Uh, it's it's primarily on the student. I mean, as an institute, they are the best. Yeah. All right. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, okay, so I just want to kind of I know this is going a lot more serious. Take a quick quick break. I want to uh, ask some a lighter question uh, to Nikita. Nikita is doing her uh, masters in uh, in Brighton University. Uh, so, Nikita, I'd, I'd like, like to understand what, what is the difference that you see, you know, studying with the international students and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you would have people from, you know, all over the world. And uh, uh, what, what are the most in interesting things that you see and, uh, and what are the positives that, that you could take uh, uh, from it? Um, so, in the university that I'm studying in, it's a little outside of London, so you don't find a lot of Indian students there. Uh, it's mostly European, um, Arabs, Middle Eastern uh, students. So the perspective that you gain, because 
uh, as Indians, you tend to want to move towards the Indian community, especially when you move out of India. Um, that was not an option for me. So whether it is at church, I am probably the only brown person there at church. Um, whether it's at my job, I work. I was working at a school where um, all the faculty was Brits or Europeans, and I was the one brown person there. So uh, it is interesting to gain that wider perspective because um, the way people think. So even at university, you have to do graded group work. So you are graded for group assignments at university, um, which means you have you can't wiggle your way out of it. You have to get along with people. You have to learn how to, uh, you tend to learn teamwork um, at university. Uh, just how different people think. You build your network at university. So they have a lot of business shows that they have a lot of exhibitions that you get to go for. And if you're really involved, you get to build that network and even start freelancing work. So in the UK, you have the option of working 20 hours as a student, part-time, um, as an international student, um, which was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come to the UK. So for me, it was either Canada or it was the UK. And the reason why I didn't choose Canada was the part-time work option wasn't as um, viable as the UK in Canada. And also the dependent visa that I can get my husband here and he can work full-time on being my dependent on my student visa. So that was a big um, criteria for me for you choosing the UK. Um, I think another difference from when I did my bachelor's in India and my master's here is plagiarism is a big deal here. Like you cannot get away with it. The minute you mm -hmm. upload an assignment, you get your plagiarism percentage. And if you're lucky, I think when I was speaking to Gabby, Gabby said they can't even re-upload their assignment in their university. Um, for us, I think we have three chances to fix it and put it back in. Um, and one of the other differences I thought was um, self-study. So you have to have to put in the work. I, when I did my bachelor's, I did assignments last minute and I passed with good marks. Here, that does not work. The amount of research, yes, I'm doing management and finance. I never thought I'd have to research so much, reference so much. Um, you will have to learn, read about Harvard referencing if you're planning to apply abroad and do university abroad. It's good to know how to what that is. I didn't know what that was till I came here. Um, and what journal articles are, didn't know what that was either. Um, because you think research is science related and you'd never have to look into that when you're a management student, it's not true. Um, that's all I do at the moment. Um, so yeah, I think those were the biggest differences from studying in India and studying abroad. All right. So you, you can literally put to task, huh? Yeah. So I think the, the sir, the Indian uh, professors have been very kind to us, all of us, I, I believe. Thank you, sir. I still remember, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when, when we were doing a master, like I said, you know, sir, Prabhu sir was my marketing faculty. Uh, he was the only one who used to give an open book uh, test. And his question papers were like, you know, were so different from the rest of them. Uh, he will give uh, five uh, 25 marks question and everything is one word answer. <laughs> and to find that one word, if you get that word right, you get 25 marks. If you don't get it, you don't get anything. Uh, and uh, it wasn't very easy. So <laughs> I don't know. He, he came up with so much of those, uh, you know, creative and uh, innovative. And, and yeah, if, if somebody writes uh, extra papers, uh, he cuts uh, uh, negative marks. How many of paper he, <laughs> he, he uh, So that was, that was fun, sir. Yeah. So yeah, so thanks thanks for sharing that, uh, uh, Nikita. And I think it's, um, and I think that that's, that's one of the reasons you know, why also people really go for the masters because uh, they really you know, put to task and they get a different experience you know, working and studying with uh, different people. Right? Okay, thank you. Um, I see Jemima here. Je uh, 
Hi, Jemima, are you able to hear me? Uh, if you ask, no, not really. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, fantastic. I, I see that, uh, you know, uh, you've, you've interest in business, humanities, uh, advertising, arts and craft. Uh, did you have any particular question? We have Corona uh, as well, like from that field, right? So did you have any particular question? Or uh, if not, you can also connect with Karuna at later point in time. Yep, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I do, thank you. Sure, thank you, great, fantastic. So, uh, so I have a couple of other questions. Uh, uh, one is uh, how, how, how we can make sure that, you know, we have, you, you, you have chosen the right career or course, uh, what God has planned for us. Is, is, are there any, uh, suggestions or any way that we can, uh, anything that you can suggest? Um, so it's, it's typically like finding God's will, right? I mean, uh, yeah. be it in terms of, you know, a life partner, be it in terms of the career. Yes, I know. Uh, if it's not for prayer, if it's not about seeking His will, sometimes whatever my my decisions are, like, you know, most of our time uh, are our focus is all about things around us. You know, if you see something very attractive, appealing, uh, there is a booming sector, we, we think that this is going to be the thing for me. But then you never know God plans are completely different. You know, you, you might feel that you have done one of the most boring kind of subjects in, in, in college or maybe a kind of a basic thing. Not sure where it's going to be of help, but then God will find a way to put it for you. So that is always a thing uh, in, in terms of it. But beyond it, uh, how do I know if, if I chosen the right career? Uh, you know, the, the, the things, one is uh, when we choose, I mean, like, no career is something that you build over a period of time uh, at the end of the day. You know, the first job is most of them take it up, whichever comes their way. I mean, like, no, yes, there are a few people are very clear about which organization I want to land up in. I mean, like, no, they, this is the one I would wait for till I get it. You know, uh, remember a lot of, the students back in those days when uh, Google was there starting up their offices in Hyderabad back in those early 2000s, they, they waited to get an internship there. I mean, they were very particular about it because most of them would convert that internship into a kind of a full-time role at some point in time. So that was the thing. Uh, I remember we had one of our students who did his project in Lenovo in the HR uh, department, and he was very clear that I want to get in there. Um, and he certainly did it by the time he completed, I can tell you, uh, three years back, he was uh, the vice president HR for Lenovo India back then. I think right recently he has migrated to Canada. Uh, but then, yes, uh, most of them we built on our uh, careers over a period of time. The first job is usually, uh, for most of us, we take what comes away. You know, when we sit for a campus recruitment, campus drive, uh, you know, we, we choose the area and we get on with it. But then at the end of the day, uh, when God places in a particular place, he expects us to shine as well. It, it doesn't uh, make a big difference. You know, God would kind of carry us through if he has chosen. I mean, like, no, that's, that, that's what is very clear. You know, he, he predestines a whole lot of things and he knew he has planned for us and, and he places us in a particular place um, he he is gonna guide us through that particular thing. So that's that's important. I mean, like no, I always uh, there's something that I was just uh, reading this afternoon before coming here. Uh, this was primarily on, you know, Moses. You know, he 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 grew up in in the in the Pharaoh's palace, and then he ran away. I mean, if you look at uh, you know Hebrews uh, eleven, which is typically the you know the the Hall of Fame list. It talks about the whole things about faith and Hall of Fame. He, it primarily says he, he no longer wanted to be seen as uh, the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. That's what he said. Moses was willing to, uh, you know, forego. He wanted to take up a new identity. You know, he was willing to forego, you know, being the Pharaoh's son. I mean, for his daughter's son, he wanted to take up the new identity to be connected with his own people. You know, and that's what he did. He ran away from the palace, moved to a different thing. And then verse 25 in, uh, you know, Hebrews 11, 25 primarily goes on to say, he no longer enjoyed the pleasures of being an Egyptian willingly, you know, was volunteered to face mistreatment by the people there. You know, sometimes he, he doesn't want to be identified in terms of the affinity of that particular place. He was willing to do. And, and lastly, it talks about 
he disregarded this grace uh, and uh, you know for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasure of Egypt. You know, uh, he he wanted to be of some use for his people. So when when God places us in a particular workplace, you know, we are. Comf- I'm sure uh, the three or four I saw here who were part of a church, uh, you know, uh, I, I did see Sushil, Nikita, and uh, the other person as well. You would have enjoyed the worship. I mean, like now most of you would have said, we enjoy the service here. Now we are gone there. We are missing APC, uh, right? We're missing that fellowship, miss, missing the church. But when God takes us and places us in a particular thing, uh, he also expects us to, you know, be that salt and light, which is typically, you know, the vision of APC as well. And so even in our careers, you know, we can be rest assured when God has a plan and places us in a particular workplace, uh, he would sustain us through uh, in the initial thing. But then when God gives an opportunity to place you in a particular workplace, it is for us to shine him through our work, you know, uh, and, and, and that is more important in terms of choosing career. And, and we look at uh, uh, in terms of how we could really, uh, you know, focus on. Uh. Okay, the essence okay. of uh, taking a career break for 2.5 years and uh, to seek the Lord, any comments on how can best, you know, the, the greatest blessing that we have in today's corporate uh, world is that they are fine with people who have taken break. You know, they don't discriminate at this point in time. For whatever, whatever reason, today, uh, the corporates, uh, workplaces do not discriminate. You're taking a year break, two years break, and then you wanted to explore, uh, look for something, and then come back to a, a routine. In fact, they, they welcome people more. Uh, gone are the days when, when we used to worry about, I have a two year, three year gap in my CV. I don't know what I'm gonna do, will I get into a job? Today, that is not at all there. I mean, like, no, uh, firms uh, embrace these kind of people. They know these are people who have taken a time off, uh, explode for, so it could be for various reasons. In your case, uh, you know, you say to seek the Lord. Um, uh, people, you know, take breaks for various reasons and, and, and most of the organizations, you know, accept people with open arms. I mean, if you feel that, uh, would I be able to make a comeback into an organization? you certainly can make it. I don't think there's any reason why we should be worried about it uh, in, in terms of break. I mean, most of them, in fact, corporates now allow you to go on sabbatical as well. You know, they say like, take a break, you go, do what you want to uh, do, uh, purposeful, utility, whatever, and then come back and then they do it. I mean, Agaroba Infosys has a very strong program of sending people, uh, uh, you know, to some of these uh, social uh, you know, initiatives where they can say, go spend time and come. I mean, that, that is where you're going to draw a passion to come and be more productive. So be it. So having a break here, a gap here, even in terms of work, uh, is, is not going to really hamper in terms of uh, dampen the, uh, you know, the prospects when you go back again to a workplace. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'd, I'd actually uh, put a link to a book, uh, Fulfilling uh, God's Purpose. Um, so that, that kind of gives an overview of you know, how we can recognize God's purpose uh, for our life and stuff. So that's uh, something that uh, you, know, you can make use of uh, that really helps. Um, yeah, so just from the curious uh, standpoint, uh, we also have Ratna. Uh, Ratna works for SAP, uh, you know, he heads the innovation uh, team there. Uh, Ratna, anything you'd like to share from the uh, career point of view and um, uh, uh, how somebody would recognize what uh, if they have chosen the right career? Are there any indicators? Uh, yeah, 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 Sean, okay. I think uh, you know, Prabhu already spoke about it. I'll just give you, you know, a little bit of my perspective. So as, you know, as it was told, you know, one thing is to have the first job, right? So after you finish your studies, like, you know, like Prabhu was telling, you know, a lot of us land up in some job that came in our way, right? I mean, even though maybe we did all the analysis to select it, maybe we land up in one job, only when you start doing the job, you know, you know whether you like it or not, right? Because it's like, you know, when you attend the interview, when you get your offer in, uh, you know, in your hand, you only know how much they're going to pay and you also know what's the reputation of the company, but then only when you do your job, you really know whether you like it or not, right? Uh, So one thing I would really, really say is that irrespective of whether you like the first job or not, right, after you have landed up, right, when God always commands us to be 
you know, sincere and diligent in whatever comes on our way, right? whatever job that we've got. So I think the first and foremost thing is to do any job that we are doing, you know, very, very well, right? So I think even if we say that it may not be the career that we want, but if that is what we have at this point in time, while well, we are still figuring out what is the job that we want to do, it's very important to do our first job, you know, or the job that is in our hand very well. Uh, secondly, you know, to really know what is the right career that we want to be, right? Um, I think one of the things we need to really ask ourselves or do a little bit of a self-assessment is that what am I good at, right? What is my passion, right? What is the skills that I have, right? What is my interest? What is that I enjoy doing, right? And also sometimes, you know, people around us, right? Peers or friends can also tell us, okay, what are, you know, what are you good at? You know, I'm, you know when, when I say, um, you know, skills, it could be either technical skills or it could also be soft skills, right? So for example, somebody who is very good in communication, somebody who's very good in, let's say, uh, you know, the, you know they, can, they can actually put a message across to the other person in a very, very good storytelling way or whatever, right? So I think this kind of a you know, person could be very good for, let's say, a sales type of career, right? But on the other hand, somebody who's very, very shy, but then they do all the job in the back, right? I mean, they are very good at, you know, be doing a meticulous, analysis and ensuring that every number is right. So maybe this person can actually, you know, work on, let's say, certain jobs which are, you know, focused on financial numbers and so on. So what I'm trying to say here is that you need to figure out what you are good at, right? And what is that actually makes you enjoy doing that job, right? So now having figured that out, you know, then, you know, when we analyze, okay, what are the opportunities we have? And most of the time, what also happens is that even if you, if you are in a job, right? When you've figured out what your interests are, what will make you happy, it's also important to also have some sort of a mentor, right? Sometimes we will think that we may like that job or, you know, we look at someone else and say, hey, you know what? I want to be a product manager because so-and-so is a product manager. Or I want to be, let's say, you know, a marketing person because so-and-so is a marketing person, right? But the thing is that it's also good to have mentor or also in the corporate terms, people call it as a shadowing just to go and talk to that person, hey, what is that you do in a day, right? Uh, do you really enjoy your job, right? Uh, let's say if I take up this job down the year, you know, what exactly is the growth path, right? What can I become after a period of time, right? So when we do all that kind of a conversation with someone who has already done that job, you also can, you know, figure out. So again, as you know, as, as Mr. Prabhu also was telling, a career is something you build over a period of time, right? We don't suddenly get landed in one job. That's the job that I want to do for the rest of my career. So it is something you figure out over a period of time. And that comes, you know, when we actually do right things, even in smaller things, right? In every little thing that is expected out of your job, how sincere you are, how good you are, you know, how much best effort that you put. You know, I think someone once said, you don't have to be the best, but do your best, right? Whatever job you may have, even if you are not the best, you do your best, right? So I think when we do that, um, you know, automatically God will also, you know, uh, reveal to us, right? What is that, you know, what is the step that we need to take? You know, it's not that everything will be laid out, but you will be able to figure out, right? Uh, maybe I just quickly give one example. So for example, when I landed up, you know, I, I did electronics and communication engineering. I got a job in the campus. They hired pool, right? I mean, they do pool hiring in the campus. So normally they hire 40, 50 people in one college. And then they randomly assign you to a job. So I was assigned to a job that was to do some sort of a technical training, right? Now, I wanted to actually do software development. You know, I, I, I did not want to do technical training, you know, on the software line. But then if I look back in my career, right, had that not been that particular job, I would have never become, you know, someone who can speak, you know, boldly, who can actually, uh, uh, you know, like openly share things, right? Because I used to be very, very quiet. And I also used to a little bit stammer quite a lot. So I would never actually speak up, right? So if I look back, had it not been for that job, right? I would have never overcome that, right? Now, it was only for one or two years I did that job. But then, you know, now I do, you know, more into software management. But what I'm trying to say is that God always puts us into a job, you know, for our own betterment, right? So I want to say that, you know, we need to take the whole career journey as, as you know, I mean, we, you know, like we need to see in God's plan and purpose, how each element, each year, each season fits into. And, uh, you know, if, if you are always dependent on God and God will actually lead you to the, you know, right next step. 
and any job that you do will actually become an enjoyable one. Yeah. So, Melki, that's all I have to say, Melki. Thank you. Thank you, Ratna. Uh, that was uh, really helpful. I'm, I'm sure it was helpful for everyone as well. Um, I, uh, I see a question uh, from, um, yeah, Kevin. Uh, I, I see that you, you have a question, but it seems like a little more incomplete. Uh, are you able to hear us, Kevin? Uh, okay. Uh, maybe not. There is uh, another question uh, from Sienna. Uh, are there any Western singing colleges in Bangalore? Uh, one that I know of uh, is the Bangalore Conservatory. Uh, that's uh, that's one of the colleges uh, you know that teaches uh, music. Um, I can put you the put the link here. Does anybody else know any other college uh, who are there? In the team, please, uh, you can help Sienna by just putting the link here. Uh, if at all, can we have any? Bangalore School of Music also, I think, is there. Is it the same? Uh, which one, uh, sir? Bangalore School of Music. Uh, Bangalore one School in Arti Nagar. Okay. I'm not sure okay. if it's the same, uh, but I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, any, any other questions from? Uh, uh, from people here. Hi, uh, hi, Mrinil. Mrinil. Uh, did you have any particular question? No. Okay. Seems like the network is a little bad. Uh, how about Nicole? Any, I didn't see your registration as such, but it did, okay, yeah, there is. Uh, did you have any other questions, Nicole? Okay, so if not, uh, so there was another question about, you know, you've been doing multiple things, you know, you are managing your farming, uh, you're also working full time, and then I'm sure, you know, you're involved in the church act activities uh, as well. So there's a question, uh, uh, about how do we manage time and meet deadlines? Is there any particular thing that you would suggest, uh, you know, doing multiple things like this? I don't know if I'm the right person uh, <laughs> <laughs> managing time and, and stuff. Yes, I mean, uh, the little I can share, but others can contribute too. I mean, uh, there is something. Uh, yeah, most of it is uh, one is learn to say no, that's one. Uh, you know, when. Uh, you know, when, when, when people just keep coming and asking for, you know, multiple things at the same time, I think it is, it's nothing wrong to say no. Uh, if, if you genuinely don't have time, we have a couple of other things in the pipeline to be done. The second, I mean, like the other thing is prioritizing. I mean, these are typically like a, a textbook kind of thing. And from my understanding, what I do is, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I try to look at things that I can finish off quickly, which I, which, uh, or things that I can really keep it for the weekend to complete rather than something on a weekday. And I do it like, I, I still help with farming. I do it, I keep it the weekends for that. Uh, you know, Saturdays I just go and come back to our uh, land here close by. But otherwise in terms of work, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure in, in most of you are in the corporate or in the studies. Uh, what I would sincerely uh, suggest is that if there's an assignment that is around the corner, uh, yeah, our, our mindset generally, all our things that we tend to do it just the day before that we complete it. Uh, but uh, as uh, Nikita was also mentioning about, uh, you know, institutions, uh, you know, focusing now greatly on things like plagiarism uh, and, and research, you need to have a kind of a, a referencing styles. I mean, they are very particular about what kind of referencing that you've done. In fact, everything is, uh, you know, completely, when you have things like that, uh, doing a, a last minute work is not going to really help us. Uh, you know, if it's, even the topic might look interesting, but then uh, it is not going to make any any impact in terms of what we do. So ideally what I would suggest is uh, if there's a work that requires uh, to be uh, a, an important thing in terms of your uh, deadlines, uh, you know, if it's an assignment that needs to be submitted, I think we need to start giving time. Uh, but if there is a call that I need to return back, uh, I can always... Uh, tell them that I'll, I'll call on this particular day at this particular time and, and then go ahead with it. Uh, but uh, managing time, uh, you know, my thing is have the priority chart. I, mean, I know there is this chart which says no, 
which is important, which is uh, urgent. You know, there's a squadron that is there. Things that, uh, not all things that are uh, urgent will be important. Uh, there could be some aspects that are important and urgent. So look at that particular quadrant and, and start working on it. That's the easiest thing I can say. But maybe others can uh, add up some things, how they are doing, especially those who are, uh, you know, doing the studies, uh, you know, uh, in, in a different place. One, because uh, they are now, uh, you know, connected with, you know, different nationalities. I mean, you know, they, they are interacting, as we say, like, you know, they have the diverse population. You would have an American or a Brit or an Irish and a whole lot of people with different kind of, uh, you know, working styles, mindsets, uh, interest, and, and especially if you're going to work on a group project, it's not an easy uh, thing as well. So I, I think they might be uh, yeah. so, you know, good with their yeah, social, things as well. Uh, are you there? Did you just go away? Um, yeah. Are, are you uh, basically talking about different working styles in a group or... No, I mean, so how do you manage time? I know, you know, you, you're, you're kind of like packed with a lot of doing a lot of things uh, 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 and or like the studies, assignments and all of that. How do you prioritize things and do? I think for me, so I, I know Nikki is working, but I think for Gabby and I, we haven't taken up part time. So I think our prime focus is towards the course and towards the assignments. So we don't really have like um, I think another side of like just allocating our time to work, but then when it comes to assignments and studying as well, and also like maintaining our relationships with our friends and family back home, um, I think it's important to just pri prioritize your time, right? And when you, at least in the first term, it was difficult after like a gap of almost four to five years getting back into studying. Um, so. I think for me, I really like I really allocated time to get back into that um, mode of studying because it was it was difficult to like get back and prioritizing your time is very important because you can once you start lagging behind on your work and eventually when you come to your exams, you will it will impact you really bad because uh, I've seen friends who just taken it easy. Uh, during the entire term and the courses are that of a nature where you can't sit and cram last minute and you can't just mug up everything and and just write mm -hmm. it out on paper um, so you have to like put in your work through throughout the entire term and then get to get your exams as well uh, hopefully that answers All your right. question yeah thank you uh Thank you, uh, Sushil. So uh, maybe just a last question. So, uh, you know, before you drop on, I know you have a hard stop at 5.50. Uh, just, just a question on medical science. Uh, there's somebody who had asked, uh, you know, I think Rohan had asked, you know, what, what are the best streams in medical science in the future? I think medical science in itself is, is, is as they say, it's recession proof. There's a lot of development that are happening in, in this world. Uh, but any any particular suggestion, Rohan? If you want to elaborate your question, please feel free to unmute and ask it. But sir, please go ahead. Uh, if... Okay, uh, I don't know how how far I'm the right person for a medical question in terms of. But then, from what we are seeing in the current world, uh, I can tell you where our students are heading to in terms of there are two areas that they are. Everyone talks about at least the students who are graduating out of here. Uh, one is they want to get into the uh, neurology, ne neural network things. I mean, neural is a, a big kind of a push for them. Anything to do with nerves and neural center and all this thing. The second, a lot of students, I see an interest in cancer biology. Uh, tremendous amount of interest in that. Uh, maybe that could be the need of the R. Uh, maybe they are able to figure out a lot of things for even HIV, but I think cancer is something that they're not able to, you know, if it crosses a particular state. But there is this... Uh, uh, so much but if you really want some information on uh, you know uh, things in medical science i can possibly connect uh, maybe through melky connect to one of my uh, batchmates who did undergrad with me uh, he did his uh, you know postdoc and he currently works in mayo clinic uh, in the the cancer biology wing if i'm not wrong and and there is another person who has done his doctorate in at Center for uh, you know Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad as well. So maybe I can connect with them. They might be the right people to 
uh, give options in terms of uh, medical sciences and its future. But as he said, it's a recession-free job. Uh, I can definitely connect you in case if they, if they need it, uh, connect you with a couple of these uh, medical professionals in that particular field. Yep. Thank you, sir. That'll be, uh, yeah, Rohan, I'll connect with you and uh, you know see how we can help you with this. Uh, but thank you, sir. Thanks for joining and, uh, and sh you know sharing with us and taking with the time out. I'm sure it was a, it was a blessing uh, for people who are here and people who are going to watch it later point in time. Um, yeah, we'll stay connected uh, and be glad that we could uh, have you here today. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure for having me here. It was wonderful interacting. And after a long time, I think uh, I, I moved out of Bangalore, uh, you know, some years back. Uh, but then we still even, uh, you know, we connect back. I mean, at least during the pandemic, I used to log into uh, APC. Because our church here, we didn't have an online kind of a service at that point in time. So we had to connect back to APC. So we we're still in a uh, thing. A wonderful experience. Thanks, Milky, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. So we just have a couple of questions you know, before we close. And uh, yeah, um, I want to ask uh, yeah, uh, Nikita, um, you know, how, one of the questions is like, you know, how uh, people shift from you know working more to uh, studying back again, right? What are the key decisions uh, points that you need to consider before you made that decisions, uh, right? What are the points that you considered? Maybe you can just explain this in simple words. Yeah. So, so for me, uh, I had actually taken a two-year break from investment banking, and I was teaching at Saint Joseph's during that time, and I realized that even during that teaching period. Um, I was constantly reading up case studies. I was teaching business studies um, and commerce at Joseph's. So I was constantly reading up on what is happening. What can I teach the kids um, that is current, you know? Uh, and I realized I kept going back to risk management. I kept going back to what's happening in finance. And I realized that my interests are still in that field. Um, so, and for me to go back, a lot of things keep changing. So even when I was in Deutsche Bank or in Goldman, I had interns that were coming from an IIT, for example, um, they had a computing background, um, or I was working with people and they knew a little bit of something that I didn't know, which is Python or Rubik's or MATLAB or, you know, building a pricing model. Um, I was a person supplying data for that model, but I didn't know what else it entailed, right? Um, but those are things that interested me. And I realized even two years into that break, um, I was still going back to reading about those things, which is why I decided, okay, you know what? Um, I'm going to have to go back and study, um, which is why I chose an MSc in international management. And... Um, I am specializing in finance. Um, so I learn all of these things that I thought were, and it is overwhelming for someone who doesn't come from a computing background or coding background um, initially. So I have had tuitions with, one-on-one -on -one tuitions with PhD students to help me um, with some of my subjects, uh, which is the only legit, the only reason why I would have passed um, or did well in that subject. Um, like I said, self-study is a big deal here. So you have to put in your own efforts to figure out how to clear your subjects. Um, but that's how I transitioned from work to study. When I was working, I always thought I wouldn't do a master's degree because I thought it wasn't required. But then the finance field is evolving. There's always constantly things are changing, regulations are changing. Um, I am currently doing a professional certification as well um, called the Certified Anti-Money Laundering Specialist Certification. Um, it's not like you do the exam once and you're done. I have to recertify every three years to keep the designation. Um, so it's just constant studying um, and you because know, the environment is always changing. Mm. So that's how I went from work to study. Well, I think very rightly put. So, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're taking a break or not. I think all of us need to continue to study, uh, mm -hmm. keep learning, uh, get a lot of these certification. I think a lot of these certifications are very easily 
accessible uh, these days, um, right? A lot of things are online. Um, you know, we can do a lot of those things. Uh, uh, some of them are very cheap as well. You know, it's not the, that expensive. Uh, yeah, so I think not just for students, but uh, I think it'll be a good uh, thing for all the professionals as well, you know, to continue to study and uh, keep, keep the certifications and all of that uh, good and right. Thank you, thank you, Nikita. Um, yeah, we, we're coming to the close of the uh, uh, session. So, uh, so for people who are here, um, I'm, I'm going to put this uh, email address. Um, this is our, uh, you know, professionals at apcw.org. So, if you need any support, um, you know, guidance or anything, please drop a note to this uh, mail ad, uh, ID. Uh, we can connect you with uh, the right people, uh, you know, somebody from that particular field or you know, experts uh, who can help you and guide you with this. Um, uh, so yeah, please make a note of the email address and we can help you, uh, you know, if you have any questions or you know, support required, please drop a note to that. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining in. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Sushil, Nikita. Uh, Gabby, uh, all of us, uh, and, and uh, so Karuna and Ratna for supporting in between. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll take this time to play, uh, pray and we close. Uh, Gabby uh, went to pray and close. And, and another information for all of you. So this will be put up online. Uh, it will be available on our website uh, um, and, and also in YouTube. Uh, so if you wanted to share this with any of your friends, uh, please, please feel free to share. Uh, and, and they can make uh, use of it. Yep, over to you, Gabby. Yeah, that's great. Um, to Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for these um, two hours, Lord, that we can come together, Lord, and just um, have the session. Thank you for everyone who's organized this and for everyone who shared. Um, thank you for everything that we've been able to take away a lot from the session, and I especially just pray for all of those who've tuned in a lot to listen, everyone who has their questions, everyone who's worried about um, the future and has big decisions to make, Father. And I just pray, Lord, that um, regardless of everything we've heard or we've said, Father, let us just um, be able to know, Father, that you're in control of our future, Lord, and that you have a plan, you have a purpose, Father, and that um, no matter whatever we're faced with, Father, that every step of the way, Lord, we know you will guide and you will lead us. Father, we just pray for... Um, all of the stress that comes with making these decisions, Lord, we ask that you take that away. We pray that you'd um, give us clarity, Lord. We just pray for every single person on this call who um, is looking for answers or looking for the best, Lord, that you would give them those answers and you would give them that clarity. Uh, we just thank you once again and um, we just place our futures once again into your hands, Lord. And we thank you for all that you've done in our lives so far, Father, and all the testimonies that we already have. And um, we know that we have so much more that's coming our way, Lord. You're always working and you're always doing the best for us. We thank you and we really pray for peace, Lord, and for wisdom. And uh, we continue just to commit our church into your hands. We thank you for them that they organized this, Lord. And we just pray that um, you just bless us and our families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for staying long and uh, uh, and uh, being there and have a good evening and a good uh, Sunday evening and a good week ahead. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.